Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, today we will talk about mechanical power. Power. This is, by the way, its definition, but we will talk about this. Um, this lecture continues a couple of lectures which uh, precede this uh, about mechanical work. Um, now, the whole uh, set of these lectures is part of the course called Physics 14 presented on Unizor.com. Um, it's a completely free website where all the lectures um, about uh, math for teens, mathematics for teenagers, are presented as a pre-course uh, for this particular course of physics. So you really have to be relatively familiar with um, simple concepts of mathematics um, needed for the physics course, which is primarily vectors, uh, calculus, on a relatively simple level. Um, so if you are not familiar with these um, subjects, I do suggest you to take the course Mass for Teens on the same website. Um, now, if you have found this lecture uh, somewhere on YouTube or on any, any other website um, except Unizor, then you will definitely have the benefits of listening to this particular lecture. However, again, le this lecture is part of the course, and the course is presented in its logical sequence on the website unizor.com. So that's where I suggest you to go. The site is free. There are no advertisement, no financial strings attached, and you don't really have to even sign in if you don't want to. Okay, now, back to power. Let's imagine um, that you are um, traveling along some trajectory. Um, now, as you are traveling, you are covering certain distance. And obviously, there is a function how much you have covered um, based on the time. So, from some initial point, um, uh, you travel during the time t certain distance, and the function distance as a function of time basically describes how you travel along the road, along the trajectory. Now, I would like to make a similarity between this, between the traveling along the trajectory, and the force which is acting upon object, um, uh, forcing it to move, uh, and doing some work, and the work which we have already discussed before. So you remember that the work basically is the force times the distance. Well, obviously there is a little bit more complicated, case when the force is variable and the distance is also some kind of a function. But anyway, if, if there is a constant force which is applied during certain distance um, and forcing basically an object to move this uh, distance, then that's the work which this force perform, performs. So, again, the object is traveling and the distance is a function of time. Now, the force is acting on the object, and the work which is performed by this force is also a function of time. As the motion continues, you have both this and this functions, the distance covered, and the amount of work which the force which initiates this distance, which is causing this distance, amount of work performed, both are monotonously increasing functions. Now, we usually um, attempt to characterize motion not only by the distance, which is covered, but also by the speed, which is the first derivative of the distance by time. This is the rate at which we are covering the distance, right? We are making some kind of an infinitesimal uh, time frame from t to t plus dt, measure the distance, and then with the, uh, and the distance covered is a differential of the function s of, uh, s of t, and then we divide basically these two things. And whenever we are making our time interval shorter and shorter, we basically come up with the derivative, obviously. So, this is the rate at which we are moving. Now, the power is actually the rate 
at which this force performs the work. So basically the power as a function of time is the first derivative of the work by time. So as we progress along the road, this is the instantaneous speed at which we are moving. As we are performing, as the force performs certain work, this is an instantaneous rate at which the work is performed. Sometimes we have to um, produce more work uh, during the unit of time, sometimes less. Just as an example, if you consider, for instance, the car, it starts from the state of rest, it first accelerates, and for which you definitely need more power because your force is stronger, right, to, 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 to make an acceleration. At some point, you have achieved your maximum speed and you go along the straight road, force is very, very minimal. Basically, the force, if the car is moving with a constant speed, is actually to, uh, to work against the friction of, of the wheels and the, the air resistance, and then both are relatively minimal. So, at that particular moment, the power which your engine is supposed to produce in the car should be less. And uh, if you notice, you have, for instance, the, uh, um, um, how is it called, RPM, ro uh, um, um, revolutions per minute. And uh, this is the gauge on your um, uh, dashboard in the car. And usually in the beginning, it goes all the way up. And then as the car actually moves along the same road in a straight line motion, the revolutions per minute are going down, which means the power, which is basically um, uh, uh, the engine exhausts, then basically it's much less. So the power can be more or less. It's the rate at which the work of the engine or, or force, whatever, it's the rate at which this work is being done. So this is the definition of the power. Okay. Now, let's consider a relatively simple case. You have the car which has achieved its maximum speed and goes along the straight line against the forces of friction and air resistance. Now, with a certain speed, um, uh, these uh, are, well, relatively known variables. I mean, we can measure it somehow, but anyway, let's assume we know that there is a force which engine is supposed to develop to force the car uh, to go in a straight line with a constant speed against the friction and against the um, air resistance, all right? Now, let's say it covers certain distance s. Then, obviously, the work which is performed is this. Now, what is s? If our speed is constant, then the distance is equal to um, the speed times the time, right? And now if we are talking about, now, and this is not just w, it's basically w as a function of time, right? So at the very beginning, at t is equal to zero, we start from this particular point, and then as the time goes, the work developed from that moment forward is basically calculated using this formula. F is a constant because there is a constant um, air resistance and constant um, uh, friction of the wheels. V is a constant again. We have basically postulated this V is, is constant. And this is the function which represents the work which is being done by the engine. So what is the power in this case? Well, as I said, this is the first derivative of the work by time, which is the first derivative of this function, which is f times v. These are constants, both, so the power is constant. So we can actually drop as a function of t and say that, okay, if the car moves along a straight line with a constant speed, the engine is supposed to uh, produce a constant power, which means uh, a, a constant amount of work is being performed during every unit of time, during the first second, during the second second, etc., etc.
So this is a very nice formula, and as I was saying, this formula is actually applicable to the case whenever you are a constant force and constant speed and then the constant power. Well, let's make this a little bit more complicated. What if the, the speed is not constant and the force is not constant, etc. And again, the perfect, exa perfect example is the car, which starts from the state of rest, accelerates, and moves uh, forward with different speed, obviously, etc. So, again, we will start with the function s of t, whatever that s of t is. I don't know the way how it's calculated, but whatever, whatever the way it is, it's some kind of a function. Now, uh, obviously, speed would be a derivative of this function by time, okay? Now, as I was saying in the beginning, car is accelerating, so there is even acceleration. Now, what is acceleration? Again, it's a function of time, generally speaking. And if you remember, acceleration is the first derivative of the speed by time. Right? So this is the first derivative, and this is the derivative from the derivative, which is actually a second derivative of the function s of t. Right? So this is how the distance is measured. Okay, fine. Now, I don't know really um, the value of the force. However, I do have the Newton's second law. At any moment of time, if this is my acceleration, now this is my force. The mass, I suppose, is constant. So, well, to tell you the truth, mass is not exactly constant if you are talking about the car, because the uh, the engine is working and there are some exhausts, etc., etc. But let's assume it's minimal, and let's assume that the uh, that the mass is constant. Now, in a in a similar case of the rocket, um, it's even more obvious that the mass is not really constant because there is a huge amount of gases which are going out and the mass is basically diminishing. But again, this is the case when we have a constant mass and some kind of a force actually forces this particular um, object, car or whatever else, to move forward. Okay. Now, if this is the case, then what we can say about the amount of work which is performed uh, we are talking about power, right? So the power is um, amount of work during certain infinitesimal uh, uh, interval of time divided by this interval of time, right? dt is differential of time. So that's what we would like to somehow come up with. Now let's think about what is the differential of the work. So this is amount of work which this force, f of t, performs during uh, infinitesimal interval where our um, object is moving by the distance this differential of s of t. So the increment of the, of the um, distance um, since we are talking about infinitesimal um, interval of time, we consider function f to be constant, obviously, during this infinitesimal and equal to f of t from the moment from t to t plus dt. So f of t is considered to be constant. Now, ds of t is basically what is ds of t? It's f of v of t times dt, right? Now, as we know, f of t is mass times a of t times v of t times dt. So this is a differential of the work at, time, at times t, 
Well, if this is the differential during the time increment, basically, infinitesimal increment, during the infinitesimal increment of dt, so the first derivative, which is this, equals to m times v of t times a of t. Mass is constant, we assumed, right? So, if my mass is moving forward and v of t is its speed and a of t is its acceleration, not necessarily constant. Acceleration also might change. Again, for instance, when you are starting the car, first acceleration is relatively high, and then as you have achieved the maximum speed, acceleration will be zero. So acceleration is variable, and speed obviously is variable as well. The mass is the only which is a constant. And this is the power. So the power in case of a non-uniform motion of the object of mass m, where v of t and a of t are basically its, well, um, geometrical, if you wish, uh, characteristics of, uh, of the motion, all of, both of them are basically related to this function. This is the first derivative, and this is the second derivative from the distance as a function. So if we know the distance as a function of time, we can actually calculate what power required to achieve this particular movement of this particular object of mass m along the distance if this is the function uh, distance of time because these are just two derivatives of this function so this is the formula for a non-uniform motion and i specifically put as a function of t in both cases because sometimes um, you can find this which is which is correct. However, this doesn't really tell you that all of these, except mass, are actually functions of time, which means as the speed is changing or acceleration is changing, uh, power consumed by this particular movement is also changing. Okay, that's basically it. <coughs> now, let's talk a little bit about how we measure the power. Well, again, let's start from the work from which actually power derived. Now, the work is measured as um, force times distance. It's measured, obviously, uh, in newtons and the distance in meters. So this is the unit of work which, um, which work is measured. And this is called Joule. So one Joule is the work performed by the force of one Newton during the motion <coughs> uh, of one meter. Okay? Now, since uh, power is basically a rate of performing work per unit of time and the unit of time is second so the power which is actually uh, differential of this by this so this is measured in joules so it would be joules divided by seconds and joule divided by seconds is called Watt. Now, Watt is a unit of measurement of the power in, the, in this in international um, system of measurement, standard physics standard of measurements, C. Now, obviously, um, there are some derivatives like kilowatt, which is 1000 watt, and megawatt, which is 1 million watt, and again, it's all named um, in uh, honor of James Watt, um, the Scottish physicist of um, 18th century, which did a lot of experiments um, with uh, what what kind of measurements of the of the of the power we can actually perform at that time. Now, one of the very interesting thing is that he was measuring the power of the horse um, and basically suggested. Um, the another 
unit of measurement, the horsepower. Now, the horsepower, uh, well, unfortunately, there are more than one definition for a horsepower, but at least I know two, for instance. There is a metric horsepower and there is a mechanical horsepower. horsepower. Now, metric horsepower um, is um, the power which is needed to uh, lift one kilogram of force which is actually 75 five kilogram of mass times 9.8 meters second square, right? This is M and this is A. So this is the 75 kilogra kilogram of, of force uh, with a speed one meter per second. So, which means this is about 735.5 watt. So this is a horsepower, which is called metric horsepower. Now, mechanical horse, uh, horsepower probably um, was the one which James Watt was talking about, um, because it has older units of measurement. It's actually 33,000 uh, pound feet uh, per minute. So time is measured in minutes, not in seconds. Force um, is measured in pounds and the length is measured in feet. So if you will translate this into, again, the units of uh, C, which is in, in watts, it would be a little bit different. It would be 745.7 watt. I think, even, I think this one is actually uh, used in, in, in many cases, whenever you're translating horsepower into... I, I think whenever people are saying horsepower, they probably meant mechanical horsepower. But I'm not really sure, quite frankly. It doesn't really matter right now. So in any case, these are two old um, uh, historical uh, measurements of the power. And, uh, and the cars, whenever the cars' uh, engines are uh, measured, they're measured in mechanical uh, horsepower. So whenever you're talking about the car which has a power of 200 uh, horsepower, that means 200 times 745.7 watt. Okay, now we finished with units of measurement. Watt is the one. And now we'll talk about rotational movement. Now, rotational movement is slightly different, obviously. But um, if you remember the, the kinematics and, and dynamics of uh, rotational movement, there is a lot of similarity between the uniform motion along a straight line and um, uniform rotation. So I'm talking right now about uniform rotation only. Now, let's consider you have a, a well, let's say, a well. And this is your uh, think and this is your bucket. So there is something which turns this wheel. Let's say the wheel has a radius r and the constant uh, angular speed omega. Now, what does it mean? It means that the speed we are lifting the bucket is v equals to r times omega. Because this is the linear speed of the, uh, on the surface uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this cylinder. And this is basically the linear speed of the bucket as it's being lifted from the well. Now, let's assume that we are lifting this bucket with a constant speed. So, this speed is omega is constant. Now, that means that there is no acceleration, which means that all the forces ma must balance each other. Now the force down is m times g. That's the weight. So the force up, which is developed by rotating uh, 
this wheel is equal to mg and it's constant so this is constant this is constant okay now power means f times v as we were saying in the previous part of this lecture and this is also constant and it's equal to m g r omega okay now let's talk about different thing you remember that whenever we are talking about rotation we usually assume that angular speed would be very similar to linear speed in uh, in the uniform motion along the straight line and uh, and the torque would be similar in some way to the force which is developed during the motion along the straight line so now let's think about this mg is the force right this is the force and r is the radius so what is mg times r that's the torque that's the definition of torque so i would like you to actually look at the at this formula um, and compare it with the uh, similar formula for um, uh, for linear motion now linear motion we were talking is equal to force times speed and the same power exactly can be measured from the rotation of the of the wheel as the torque times um, uh, angular speed you see instead of force we can use torque instead of speed we can use omega we don't really know these two things what is exactly well the force actually we don't know but the speed we don't really measure we measure everything in in terms of angular speed right we don't really measure the speed of the surface of the of the uh, of the wheel so the angular speed and torque are characteristics of the power needed to do whatever we were doing uh, which means uniformly moving upwards this bucket of uh, of water now let's assume that there is some kind of an engine here and this is the shaft of this engine now usually if uh, there is an uh, engine which is manufactured let's say it's electric uh, electric engine electric motor then usually there are characteristics to this motor the power and the torque same thing if you remember in the car engine car engine has two characteristics the power the power and the torque right so this is how they are related the power and the torque are related like this now um, I was um, comparing how this formula actually um, uh, colorates, colorates with, with real, um, real numbers produced by um, car engine manufacturers so in the text which is accompanying this lecture on unizor.com I actually put a graph um, which is just taken from I don't remember which which car engine I took where the power and the and the torque are actually specified for different angular speeds different um, uh, numbers of revolutions per minute and I do the calculation and uh, lo and behold this is approximately uh, correct well approximately because the car engine is not really like ideal engine it has certain limitations etc but during you know certain uh, point in this graph this is um, a, a true formula uh, to to the degree of precision which which basically I consider um, acceptable so this is the correlation this is basically a dependence between these two very important parameters of any um, engine uh, which basically does the rotation uh, like electric motor or car car engine etc the power and the torque are related to angular speed well uh, I encourage you to take a look at this uh, text uh, which is accompanying the lecture on the unisor.com um, it basically contains whatever I was just talking about but it's in writing so basically when you're reading this it's like a textbook um, and uh, 
and uh, then uh, well you can uh, start uh, solving certain problems which uh, I'm going to put um, into this uh, course so the next lecture will be dedicated to the problems uh, with power and uh, as usually uh, I consider solving problems a very important part of this uh, course that's it that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>